Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to recap my first year in real estate. So it is coming up on a year now in just a few days and I wanted to take the time just to revisit where I started and where I am now. And I think what I wanted to do for this video is talk about the goals that I had set for myself at the beginning when I started, what I actually accomplished, some of the biggest lessons that I've learned, and then maybe a funny story that I've had in real estate or something like that. So I'm going to get started. Okay, so as far as my goals go, my goals at the beginning of the year were definitely different than what I ended up doing. So I joined a team, I joined the Brooks Group at Momentum Realty, and the Brooks Group had goals for all of their agents that were on their team. And their goals were to have 36, sell 36 homes. There was no volume goal, um, but it was 36 units. And when I started, I thought that was absolutely insane and impossible. <laughs> I mean, when I've heard of real estate agents, I guess mostly do it part-time, but sell maybe like five, 10 homes a year. And so 36 seemed outrageous to me. So technically that was what my team's goal, what my sh goal should have been, but secretly I made my own goal and that was to sell 20 homes and to do 6 million in volume. So I set that goal and for the first three months of real estate, I did not get a contract or make a sale. I had my first sale on March 14th. And so it had been a long time and I was going through those two months and I was like, there's no way I could have ever done 36 homes. I mean, the first quarter's over and I have like one sale. So that's where my goals started. And then the summer picked up and all of my hard work and grinding in the first quarter really hit home in the summer months. And I knocked it out of the park that those months, the second quarter of the year. And so then I was like, wait a second, like I can do this. Like I know who I am. I'm a good agent and I can definitely do better. So then I reevaluated my goals and I wanted to do 10 million in volume. So like I said, beginning of the year, when I first started, started cold calling, my goal was 6 million. Then I changed it to 10 million. So we'll go over what I actually did. I, by the end of the year, I will have closed 26 homes for 9.2 million. So kind of, I, I knocked it out of the park with my original goal, but then just missed the secondary goal that I set. So um, that's okay. You know, I mean, I, that's, I think amazing for the first year, not to be bragging or whatever, but I'm definitely proud of myself and just very grateful for the team that I'm on and the leadership that my brokerage and my team provides and then also just my family and friends for being so supportive because it was definitely an adjustment to doing real estate full-time with my personal life as well so just having a very supportive family and friends made it so much easier and way better. Okay, so the first and probably most important lesson I can share with you is it's okay to say no. So where that really came into play for me is everyone always told me when I was going to start in whatever industry, not just real estate, that you should say yes to everything, do everything you can to learn, gain experience and knowledge and say yes. And, and, and I'm all for that, don't get me wrong. You should work your butt off, grind, get as much experience as possible, but make sure that you um, have some guidelines in place. So where that really came into play for me is I was showing people homes that never, I never should have been showing homes to. So I would not ask for a pre-qualification letter or they weren't really motivated to buy a home. So they're like, mm, maybe in six months we'll buy a home. And they would say, oh, hey, can we go see this one just in case? Um, and they wouldn't have like an up-to-date pre-approval. They're not their timeline wasn't matched up to going to have boots on the ground and see houses. And honestly, because like I said, I hadn't sold a home my first three months of real estate, I, I would show anyone a home that smelled like they wanted to buy a house. Like I was running myself ragged. Some days I didn't have time to eat or even use the restroom. And I was quickly burning out. Um, I would say within the first three months, if I hadn't Took, taken a step back and realized, okay, like this is too much. 
plus have actually started seeing results, I don't know that I would have made it to the end of this year. So I would say my biggest advice is to know when to say no, like it is okay to say no, like opposite sides. Like I do think you should gain experience and try and gain as much knowledge as you can and attend events and network with other agents, but also have time for yourself, know what you can handle and go with that. Okay, the second most important lesson that I have learned in real estate is to set boundaries. Holy moly, setting boundaries changed real estate for me. So in the beginning, I would tell my customers or clients, like, call me anytime. Like, I am here for you. And because I genuinely am here for my clients, like, I take on their desires like they're my own and I fight for them. But they would actually take me up on calling me at any time. And I mean, I was getting phone calls at 11 o'clock at night about real estate and there's nothing I can do about their transaction at 11 o'clock at night, but I was still answering the phone, still talking people through things. And it was just not healthy. My goodness, especially because real estate, you work seven days a week. I mean, you have to set aside time to have family time and have dinner and sleep for that matter. I should be asleep at 11 o'clock at night. So um, implementing boundaries on just when you answer your phone. So like after a certain hour at like seven or 8 PM, whatever you set for yourself, know that unless it's an emergency and something has to be done then or else it will affect the transaction in a negative manner, then um, it can wait until the next morning. So that was a hard lesson for me to learn because I just wanted to do everything and anything for my clients. And I still do, but I also have to put myself first and in most scenarios, not all. So that was a really big thing that, and then also kind of ties into my last one, but also having boundaries of making sure I have expectations for what I do. So like if I'm going to meet with a buyer, um, I'm not going to show them a house unless they're pre-approved. They want to buy in the next three months and we've narrowed down their search like to a certain criteria. So things like that just made it a ton more better because I was spreading myself too thin. And so I wanted to make sure that I focused my attention and soul energy into the people who truly needed my help at that time. So, okay. The third lesson I learned in real estate so far is to not care what people think and to carry yourself with confidence. So that was really hard for me in the beginning to have this sense of confidence about me when I genuinely did not know what I was doing. But in all honesty, I would find agents. If you're, if you're on a team, that's even better. If you're brand new to real estate, or if you're a single agent, find other agents to surround yourself with that you know, if you don't know something, you can call them and talk to them because that way you can go into those conversations and transactions with the confidence because you know you have people behind you to help you. So I would say have confidence, you will get through it. You will get your buyer or your seller close and just know that if you're, you have the best intentions, like it's going to be okay. Like there's going to be hiccups. There's a hiccup in every single transaction, whether it has to do with you, the lender or the title company. Um, and then also to not care what people think about you. So whenever I first started showing up more on social media and using social media for business instead of my personal life, I mean, that was a big mental hurdle for me to get over because I was like, oh, what about the people that I went to college with or even high school with? What are they going to think about me? And you know what? At the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter. You, I was showing up to put myself out there for business reasons and um, it's okay if people don't want to follow you or don't like the content you're putting out there. It's okay, not, you're not here to please every single person in the world. That is an impossible task to complete. So just be you and your authentic self and be confident in that. Okay, so I would say those are my three biggest lessons I've learned. And I feel like most of those can apply to even outside of real estate. If you're just entering a new industry or starting a new career, I think those are good lessons to take with you. Now I will go into my funniest story in real estate so far. So this is actually how I got my first paycheck in real estate. Notice I did not say sale, my first paycheck. 
Um, oh, I have two funny stories. Okay, <laughs> I'll get started. So this one lead, like I said, I had no boundaries. I got this Zillow lead. Um, I was at dinner. I got it from the table, took this lead. This customer said they had a pre-approval. They wanted to see this house. They need to buy it. Their lease is about to end and they need a home. Can I show it to them tomorrow morning? And I said, yes, because it did check out. They had pre-approval and everything. So um, I met them at the property. I knocked on the door and the man answered the door, looked me up and down and was like, who are you? And I was like, oh, my name's Ella. I'm a real estate agent. I had a showing scheduled at 10 a.m. and we're here to see the house. And he was like, no, you don't. And shut the door in my face. And I was like, okay. Um, <laughs> I was trying to keep my cool. I did not have confidence. Um, so I called the listing agent. She explained to me that that was the tenant and that, that tenant was being very difficult letting people see the house. So she called him, worked her magic. And about 15 minutes later, meanwhile, I'm sitting at the end of the driveway trying to make conversation with this buyer who I never met, who didn't speak great English, it was very awkward. He was wondering what was going on. They finally let us in and they, I kid you not, they had moved like a little walkway approximately this wide, like enough for two feet to fit in throughout the little duplex. And it was filled with just trash, like to the actual ceilings in some parts, just trash. It was disgusting. Disgusting. It smelled so gross. There were three little yap dogs biting at my ankles. It smelled like urine in there. Um, they had babies crying. And so I walked in. It was really gross. And then I looked to the left because someone said, like, welcome in. And I look and it's this lady sitting there nursing her baby with just absolutely no clothes on. Like, at everything everything out and I was like Wh what like I was so thrown off and I have the bad trait of like if I'm very uncomfortable I will laugh or just like chuckle and I I really hope no one else out there has that trait because it's not a good one does not get you very far so I actually told my buyers I was like okay you guys finish walking through I'm gonna go wait outside so they did that. They were like, we want to buy it. We need to buy it. I was like, okay. Um, so I start, we start talking about what they want to offer and numbers and things like that. And I was so excited because this would be my first sale. And they're like, you need to call so-and-so Johnson. And I was like, who, like, who is this? They're like, you need to call. And like I said, they didn't speak great English. So I was like, okay. So they gave me this number. So I called this Mr. Johnson and I was like, hi, like I'm calling in regards to so-and-so. They I'm about to write an offer for them, but they told me to call you. And he was like, yeah, that those are my buyers. What are you, what are you talking about? And I was like, your buyers, like I just showed them this house. I just got this lead. They're my buyers. He's like, no, no, like I, they're mine. I just wasn't able to show them the house today. So they must've gone on Zillow. And I was like, oh, you're kidding me. So anyways, I ended up getting a referral fee. That is how I made my first paycheck in real estate was by showing this person a home who had another realtor and the tenants were um, unclothed. So yeah. you just yeah. never know what you're going to run into in real estate. And I'm sure every realtor has funny stories like that, but that's what I've had so far in my first year. Alrighty, you guys, I hope this video was really helpful as far as setting goals, what lessons I've learned so maybe you don't have to go through them, and then just a good laugh on some funny real estate stories. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And if there's any questions you have in regards to real estate, I'm in Northeast Florida. So um, just give me a shout or a comment or a DM. So I'm here to help you. Thank you for watching.